Okay, hi everybody. Um, this is just my first live stream. I'm trying to do it randomly for fun because then, you know, it kind of gives you a reason to stay tuned to the channel and not, I am going to schedule some live streams soon too, but you know, it doesn't always fit into my schedule either. So whoever stops by, uh, I really hope that you come in, ask some questions about me. You know, I may not be able to answer every single thing. Technically, I don't know everything. But if you're a beginner, I'll definitely be able to help you out. Intermediate, you know, I could definitely look stuff up with you and probably uh, know a lot of the answers as well. So uh, please come on in. <laughs> and just use the uh, like the YouTube chat itself. So. Hi, guys. <laughs> Just ask me something to get me started. <laughs> something about my life. Uh, you know, data science question. Yeah, I, I, how did I know you were going to come in? <laughs> Such a loyal guy. Um, I don't know about machine learning, even basics. Can I start? Oh, so my interpretation was that you had started. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's the point. So that machine learning course that I'm doing right now, which I am putting out, I guess I probably uploaded a video 40 minutes ago. Um, so I have one video every single day. And from the very beginning, yes, they it starts from complete beginner, like, you know, maybe some introductory stuff, like, you know, how to add numbers. Uh, anything really helps, but I do cover literally everything. Like, uh, aside from adding numbers and multiplying numbers together, it does, it covers everything. So, um, the point of this is just to cover a really long time frame. Like, you know, it's just short videos starting from the very basics, three minutes, five minutes, maybe max 10 minute video every single day to do gear towards very beginner introductory machine learning all the way up until, you know, however far I go. So I haven't made that many videos in advance. I think I only have two or three that are ahead of today that are uploaded scheduled already. But yes, to answer your question is complete basics. Uh, I am gave gearing that towards you don't know Python uh, very well. You might know Python a little bit, and I have some Python modules as well to get started. Um, not really much coding necessary uh, background, no, ma no math background necessary, calculus, linear algebra, calc I, I cover all that stuff. Anyone else? Hi, Skylar. <laughs> How's it going? How are you? Recently attended an IBM webinar. They are saying if you don't have experience, work with your projects. If you don't have experience, work with your project. We will go through your GitHub if you don't have experience. What else we... So what's your... Sorry, what's your goal? Are you trying to get a job at, at IBM? Or what's... I love your channel, bro. Glad you posted. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, that's a great group. Thanks so much. Thanks for your videos. I'm very glad, Skylar. I, I hope to do that for a long time into the future. George, getting a job or going to master's? Sorry, is that a question? Getting a job or going to master's? Like, should you, after undergrad, should you get a job or go to master's? Are you saying which one? Uh, Praveen, to become a data scientist. So, okay. Well, to become a data scientist, I, I mean, 
basically it's it's self-declared right so if you mean become a data scientist as in get a job as a data scientist then there, there's a lot of different things you can do definitely projects is is good to actually get the job uh, but to be a data scientist i mean it's not really about uh, having done projects it's about you know knowing all as much as there possibly is to know and that's up until uh just basic data science up until neural networks like the the state of the art models so uh, reading books and uh, hopefully following my channel and the videos that i do is going to help you become a data scientist but to get a job i mean yeah you're going to need to do projects and github is one way of showing your projects i actually always recommend trying to show your projects through um like even twitter or youtube or uh, medium.com if you read articles from there trying to show as much as possible to people that would actually see it rather than just if they were to look at it then they will see it there I uh, okay i stumbled upon your channel some months ago good i only actually started the channel some months ago surprisingly you may not believe that i started the channel in february um so perfect please what are the most important things to get to master to get real experience in data scientists by self-learning what are the most important things to master to get real experience? So, uh, I mean, to get real experience, uh, again, it's kind of self-declared, like real experience is whatever you want to call it. If you mean a job, as in someone else is saying, you have experience as a data scientist because I was your employee, then yes, um, and projects is a good way to go. But uh, the most important things to master to to actually try and get a job in the field is definitely uh, neural networks right now. So although in my ML, in my machine learning course, it's going to be at the very end because that's state of the art, working from the basics to the end. Uh, the most important thing you can do to get a job right now is to do the, uh, the deep learning specialization, which I, I posted a video yesterday yesterday um showing the machine learning basically zero to to hero all coursera certification pathway and somewhere in the middle i had deep learning specialization and uh it, it's really the most important one in there is to to understand the neural network models so that you can build pretty much anything like the, the point is that you have five modules in that course and you can learn really anything uh based off of those based off those modules. And then that gives you a pathway to where you want to really become a data scientist as in where you want to really major in. Um, what topic in ML slash AI am I most interested in? Well, so I, I did accept a, a job. I don't know if you follow me on, on LinkedIn, but I have a, uh, I have accepted a job at um, deepbreathe.ai. So, Basically, they, they are doing computer vision to understand, um, you know, you know, problems in lungs, basically. And so you could use a, which I just uh, talked about briefly with in the deep learning specialization, the fourth course covers convolutional neural networks, which is basically uh, all of modern computer vision. It's not all of computer vision, because if you read a book in that, it might have earlier techniques, but all of modern computer vision is done with convolutional neural networks or some extension of those. They're all based off of the same kind of core idea. Uh, so for me, interested in computer vision, as in uh, I'm taking a job in that, it's going to help out people. You know, I, I hope I've shown with my YouTube channel that I'm trying to help people. And so my job as well is going to be um, actually helping people survive and in the future, hopefully make them live longer. So uh, computer vision for sure. And I'm actually reading a book about natural language processing. If you were to drill me about NLP questions right now, you know, I might not to be super good at it because I, I'm trying to learn all that stuff. So currently learning, trying to do NLP, trying to practice uh, computer vision for sure. When did I start learning about data science? Where did you learn the skills and how did you learn it? Well, that's a, that's a long story. And I mean, if there's uh, if there's not too many other questions after, I can keep, talk I can keep talking for as long as you want. Um, so where did I, when did I start learning about data science? Well, so in first year, I do have a video about my story if you've, if you've seen it, but that's totally okay. Uh, and it doesn't show, doesn't tell everything. Basically my story is that it, I joined the University of Waterloo in Ontario for the mathematics co-op degree. And so I, I didn't really know why I was doing that. You know, math is just as general as it can possibly be. Um, but I did that. And so in first year, no, I just did some math, calculus, linear algebra stuff. 
And then in second year of university is when I started to pick up uh, reinforcement learning, at least definitely, I wouldn't say I started to learn reinforcement learning in second year, um, but I definitely learned a about the concept of it, the idea of it, all the buzzwords, you know, you know, ML, AI, big data. I, I started hearing about all these things. And then I started learning about machine learning a lot in second year. And then I definitely jumped into Coursera courses like Injuring's machine learning really helped me. Uh, I, I read, I forget the name of the book, but I read a very canonical or famous book about neural networks, not the deep learning book. Uh, I've read partial of that too, but it's extremely difficult to read. Um, hopefully that answers a little bit. Uh, what ML algo do you find the most fascinating? Well, by far the most useful is just the standard invention of the neural network, like uh, multi-layer perceptron or whatever. You have inputs, and then you do matrix multiplication to get uh, either like a logistic regression or, um, or a ReLU is it's the activation function. Just the base neural network is honestly, it can solve basically any problem well, it, like even computer vision and natural language processing stuff. It, might actually do the job. Of course, there's going to be more complex stuff than that, but I'm really fascinated by just the base neural network and honestly, how easy it is to understand. Like it, it's crazy because there's so many different numbers being calculated, but if you abstract it into linear algebra, which by the way, I'm not a linear algebra God, I just know a little bit uh, about matrix multiplication. I've done some courses that I honestly didn't understand all that well. Um, it, it the simplicity of it is fantastic where it just works through back propagation which just means use the chain rule to calculate derivatives bump them up a little bit that's what's changing the parameters in the model so that it fits the data better so that really fascinates me and honestly it just is all linear regression was stacked upon you know it's not it's not linear don't get me wrong it's it's a non-linear operation but under the hood there's a lot of linear regression going on and so taking a course in just regression is going to really help understand that as well um what do you think about full remote job as data set? oh yeah oh yeah data sure <laughs> remote job is uh that's that's going to be the way to go like uh there, there is no reason that you have to be in the office to do data science i mean data science is very broad and so if you're going to be a computer vision practitioner where you're literally like going into cameras it, working with a robotics camera and then you're trying to control a system then i mean sure probably should go into the team with that but uh for a remote job in general data science like using apache spark uh, python pandas that kind of thing even making neural networks with tensorflow and kiras uh honestly yeah Full remote is totally fine. We have the communication tools to to chat everybody. It, honestly, I, I think when people say that like remote jobs don't really work is just the most of the time the reason. I mean, if it's fundamentally, again, if it's fundamentally not a, a remote thing, then that's different. But if it's a computer job, a lot of companies say like, we don't like remote work. It's honestly just because the people are lazy or they're not communicating properly and you, you, people don't feel comfortable to message each other randomly, which you really have to be able to do. So full support. Uh, the next one is, I've met some data scientists in career karma. What is career karma? Let me Google that. Boot camp? Learn about boot camps, ask questions. How about you explain to me uh, what career karma is in like a couple lines and I'll get back to that later. Who work in ML with no degree and attended a boot camp. Also, which would be the best platform to build a portfolio? That's a really good question. So the best platform is honestly whatever you enjoy the most. So it doesn't really matter uh, how you get your stuff out there. The point is that you need to be able to do stuff so that you imp improve your portfolio and people can see it. So the minimum requirement is that it's public. Uh, I prefer ranking based things like github is kind of search based like as in if you search something it's gonna it's gonna show up what's most relevant but it, it's not the same as like youtube or twitter or any of those types of social networks even kind of facebook uh, for business is it's all based off of who is you know the most popular and so the point it's a very competitive thing to build your portfolio you are your portfolio your online is your portfolio so it's whatever that you gets you out of bed in the morning to work on it uh so i'm addicted to youtube now uh, getting building subscribers and i mean this is literally my first live stream and i have a bunch of questions so uh it, makes me very, very happy. So 
Uh, anything that gets you to do that, if you want me to answer an actual question, like say YouTube, Twitter, uh, anything like that is, is a really good option. But something that you build from, from nothing to you know, like an empire almost is my answer. Are you working on any interesting ML based web app that we can see? Um, man, am I busy? Honestly, I, I might forget that I'm in school. I'm going to have exams very shortly on my 4A, so second last school term. Uh, no, <laughs> it's really the answer. Uh, I, I read at night. I work on YouTube as much as possible in the day, which, you know, I might throw in a web tutorial in there. I was looking at, you know, maybe, I don't know, Django. So I was thinking about maybe doing Django or something like that as a tutorial. But uh, me currently, no, I, I don't really have time for actual projects, just tutorials and uh, different material. I, I post a video to my machine learning course every single day, and it's I have to keep up with that during school. So, no. <laughs> I'm currently a third year student. Okay, can you tell me, uh, like what what's what you're learning? So, if I start learning data science from now, will I be able to crack the interview? Well, here's the thing. So, crack the interview. I get why you're asking that question, especially because there's that book like Crack the Coding Interview. Uh, the coding interview is extremely. Uh, Keep saying the word canonical it just means that like you know standard is ba basically the the coding interview is going to be at a top tech company you know some sort of hard lead code level question probably uh, but data science is it can vary a lot depending on, on the company for sure same thing with tech companies and coding questions it's it varies from easy to medium to hard Except for data science, you know, some might ask you an SQL question. A lot of them do. Uh, some might ask some crazy probability questions. So if you if you're trying to get a job at Facebook or Google or something like that, they very well might ask you some crazy probability question that uh, stumps the, stumps the crap out of you. Um, but to crack the normal data science interview that I've done, you know, 30, 40, 50 times, it, not that I've gotten. <laughs> I mean, I've gotten interviewed for that many times. I haven't accepted or gotten that many offers. I mean. That standard level interview is basically an SQL question, most likely. That's, you know, if you know up to joins and subqueries, you're probably okay. Uh, if you learn basic uh, neural network concepts, so at least knowing up until the standard neural network, understanding simple regression, it's mostly understanding the basics for sure. Like if you understand regression well, then you can, you understand like test and validation uh, training sets and gradient descent that type of thing if you know the basics really well then you're good to crack the interview if you can also do sql and code you know moderately well okay where am i so do i need to learn front-end development before getting into model deployment i seem to get a lot of errors with that. <laughs> oh who doesn't man uh errors on heroku yeah <laughs> no don't worry we all do that um do you have to like become a master in front end or take a, a specialization in front end? It wouldn't hurt. I, I honestly, I haven't done any of that. I've just kind of, you know, if you I fight with it long enough, like Heroku is definitely one of those things. If you're trying to deploy a model on the cloud, then you're going to get errors all the time. You know, I talked to my older brother that, you know, is, is really just in heavy software deployments, so doing stuff on the cloud, like in Amazon buckets, and you get errors like crazy. That's totally okay. Just keep fighting with it. Uh, try to understand the basic concepts of how data moves around from user to, to maybe your app and then the database, the cloud, wherever it's going. Try to understand those concepts through JSON is the term. And you probably can figure it out. It's okay. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't become a master in it. I would focus more on app deployment or sorry not app deployment i would focus more on uh, data science work so flask or django which is better uh flask honestly so so django is for like heavy duty apps and i actually don't know django but i do know why you would use flask versus django uh for 99 percent of people flask is totally okay as a project maybe if you're a company you know they might appreciate you know django because that might be what they're actually using in the interior but for your project's sake, definitely just use Flask. I'm a computer science student. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Oh, oh, sorry, you're the person. Yes, yes, yes. That, that was funny in order. Yes, okay. So that makes sense. 
if you're a computer science student cracking the data science interview, yeah, so you already know how to code, then you're probably good to go on the coding side, maybe the SQL side as well. Uh, just the data science fundamentals, you're probably good to go to get a good interview. Machine learning, deep learning, or reinforcement learning, which is the future according to you? Well, it kind of tricky question because deep learning is a subset of machine learning and reinforcement is learning is kind of a subset of both because uh, reinforcement learning is machine learning and also you might use deep learning to do reinforcement learning. Uh, honestly, though, I would get what you're trying to ask in general, if you're maybe saying supervised versus unsupervised versus reinforcement learning, uh, reinforcement learning is going to be crazy if you're following following DeepMind, Google DeepMind at all. Uh, make sure you follow them on LinkedIn or whatever because they are doing some crazy work and their papers in the last 10 years are freaking fantastic. So uh, reinforcement learning is really cool. Is your university degree three or five? <laughs> Funny question. It's actually five. Uh, with with co-op, I do five year. Best resource of SQL? Good question. I learned SQL through a, uh, a basically just Googling random stuff when I needed it and actually learning it through a course in university where, you know, they taught most of the fundamentals to learn it from the outside. Uh, honestly, there, there's the Code Academy thing, which isn't terrible. I have a tutorial on my, my channel that I think covers the SQL basics for uh, the first like 30 minutes of SQL up until joining. It, which is, you know, up until what I was saying with the coding interview, probably good to go for my channel there, for my video there. Uh, from outside, uh, I honestly don't know. There, There is definitely a certification on Coursera for SQL. There's the Google Analytics certificate. Uh, a lot of different things do SQL, including Spark SQL, which is a very modern way to do that for data scientists. Okay, and I recommend data science projects I can do where I'd use SQL and big data. Um, I could. Um, I, I, honestly, I obviously get why you're asking that question. The, the problem is I'm not going to answer that explicitly because the, the whole point of a project is to come up with it yourself. Uh, if you are trying to learn this stuff and just follow along, then go ahead and Google various blogs about using Spark. Uh, I'll definitely say Spark is important, PySpark in particular. Um, I, I'm not going to give you a particular project because it should come from you, but I would follow blogs, just Googling big data, Spark, those types of things. What type of videos are doing well? Concepts or coding along type videos? Well. So here's the thing. Um, a lot of my views come from posting stuff in Facebook groups. I'm, I'm sure most of you came from either Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, if, if you came from YouTube, then hallelujah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, most of you came from Facebook or LinkedIn but because I post some particular videos uh, on Facebook or LinkedIn, and I don't post everything on those. I post the bigger, uh, longer tutorials or maybe a playlist of multiple videos. So if you look at my machine learning course, I mean, it looks like there's about 40, 50 people following it right now, and that's growing all the time. The first video has about a thousand. Uh, most people obviously, you know, go off and do their own thing. Then about 40, 50 people are following that. And so those videos get about 40, 50, each of those fundamental uh, three to five minute video about some part of linear regression. Uh, the videos that have way more views come up in YouTube search. And so that's Python's, my Flask tutorial, uh, my PySpark. I've done a lot of PySpark stuff because I think it's really under undervalued in data scientists. Uh, so Flask, PySpark, really anything that has like a framework or something like that in the title that's very searchable uh, has a much higher probability of coming up and being successful for me just on YouTube. So there's only a, f and also my data science certifications videos, uh, one of them did very well. The, the data science certifications ranked or something like that. Uh, what I want to learn data science, how should I start? Take the, take the IBM data science certification, honestly, it's probably the best way to do it. I want to learn, I just read the same thing, to get data scientist job as it must to know deep learning and be very good at ML or be, uh, yeah, so really good question. Is it just deep learning? Is, is all the hype about deep learning worthy? Yes, actually it is. Uh, I said at the beginning of this that trying to reference that deep learning specialization is probably the best thing that you can do. Uh, it, it's, it really is. So I would 
very recommend getting good at deep learning. The, the thing is a lot of companies, the, most of the staff doesn't know deep learning. Some of them know advanced analytics like Spark. Uh, of a fair amount of them know machine learning like linear regression or something like that. Uh, but most companies are moving and trying to get people and paying them very well, uh, those that know deep learning. And just to maximize your probability of getting a job, uh, deep learning, definitely you're going to stand out like crazy and it's you can solve pretty much every problem with deep learning. So yeah, I, I would do it. I, I would get pretty good at it. Please recommend us projects of data. Yeah, so, <laughs> sorry, I was kind of just saying this. I, I understand this question is going to come up a lot, recommending projects for data science, machine learning. Uh, there's a lot of, again, canonical examples like the Titanic from Kaggle. Honestly, just look at Kaggle and solve those problems. And so they have stuff like MNIST, handwritten digits. Um, yeah, Titanic data sets. There's a lot of those beginner projects of as long as along with if you do the machine learning course from Andrew Ng on Coursera, you're going to get a much better feel about the various domains of this kind of thing. So like recommender systems, um, all of the very common examples of machine learning being applied. And you should be able to make your own project from there after you have a feel for it. Okay, I finally got to the bottom. Anything else? Come on, guys, ask some questions. <laughs> literally anything, <laughs> literally anything. Hello. <laughs> I mean, where do I see myself in 10 years? So uh, 10 years, I would definitely like to be doing something like this full time. Uh, machine learning and deep learning has a lot of cool opportunities to do a lot of different work, but still where my passion really lies is teaching and trying to explain it to various people. And so I, I really hope that I'm something like a, a big YouTuber that has a lot of subscribers and then you know, I would be getting money from that and being having a very, very fun time waking up every single day, powering through this, because even during school and all the other stuff going on, I want to be doing this. So yes, I want to be doing this if I possibly can. Do I think data science is overrated? Uh, a funny question. So uh, some of the buzzwords for sure uh, have an issue, such as artificial intelligence really bugs me because uh, I think the concept of AI is overrated because a lot of people don't really know uh, well, nobody knows really what it means. Data science as in like, you know, do I think you should start learning data science, whatever that encompasses? Yes, I really think you should. It gets a lot of hype. And of course, that brings negative hype because since there's hype about it being cool, there's a lot of people saying, don't just follow the hype train of, of data science. Uh, I would follow the train, honestly. I, I think it's very silly for people not to think that it's worth learning. Uh, I think it's a lot of people that just know they're never going to bother learning this stuff and then go hating on how this is piecing the world together, solving so many problems every single day. Uh, startups are happening all the time in machine learning where data science in particular, you know, that that term, unless it encompasses machine learning, I would say it it, it is a little bit over underrated. Uh, but with machine learning included, it's definitely properly rated where startups are coming up all the time where it's like, you know, we're randomly valued at like a couple million dollars just because we apply data science to this problem. And so you could do that. So I definitely wouldn't say it is overrated. Uh, how do we start machine learning? So I, I mean, I have my course, so you could follow that along. If if you're ahead of that, or if you don't like it, that's totally okay. Uh, I released a video yesterday about the entire pathway of certifications for machine learning. So please check that out. Uh, how do I know if I know enough 
about Python and programming to get a job, uh, well, you fail. So that's totally okay. So as long as you can get a, an interview, then that's awesome. If you end up failing that interview because you have no idea what you're talking about, you've, you failed a coding interview, uh, that's that doesn't matter. Like I, I've done that too many times before until I got a lot better. I had just a quick anecdote. I, I, I did have one interview once where I claimed I knew about neural networks and I talked about them and then they were like, how could you make your neural network better? And I had literally no idea how to answer that question. I was like, uh, I don't know, neural networks should be fine. And no, there's actually a huge long story about all that stuff that I know now by learning everything that I can and by failing and knowing that there is more to learn in this area. So you, you really learn by just, you know, doing it. Like if you fail, that's totally okay. And just try to get interviews no matter at, at any stage, really. Of course, I could make a video about like, don't apply until you've done this. And maybe that's a good idea, but really apply constantly. If you fail, that's, that's fine. I'm working as a data analyst. Okay. I'm trying to switch to data scientist. All right and work on ML models and deployments. Good, I support that decision. How to convince recruiters I'm not a hobby data scientist. Uh, well, so you need to be really good at it. Basically, you, you need to put all of the terms that a data scientist would know on your resume, and therefore it's pretty much self-claimed that you're a data scientist rather than a data analyst. As data analyst, you would have obviously SQL, maybe Python, probably R, uh, Excel, is probably a skill uh, you would have all that stuff that might might they might think you're a data analyst but then as soon as you learn all of these concepts like uh, training test validation sets gradient descent neural networks you start to put these terms on the top of your resume you have some projects where you show that you have them then I, I mean sure you're a hobby data scientist but that's that, that doesn't matter like it, you're you're a data scientist self-claimed because you know the stuff it takes to be a data scientist. So I wouldn't worry too much. It seems more like you're caring about their opinion a little too much and you're you're worried how they're judging you, which is important. I totally get that. You need to think about their perspective, but uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that in particular. What is the definition of AI? <laughs> uh, according to me, um, okay, so for, I'll answer this twice. What I want AI to be, which I've said in a LinkedIn post once, was basically, I want artificial intelligence to be called basically robots. So unless it's kind of moving or doing something really, truly fantastic, uh, then I wouldn't really call it artificial intelligence. What AI is actually, def like its real definition is basically doing, making computers do stuff that originally humans uh, could only do and or, or can't do at all. And, and so the, the reason that AI is kind of a messed up term is because as soon as we make computers do something that they weren't able to do, or in machine learning and supervised learning, we often follow what people do so that we can make these models. Uh, once we've done that, and then five years later, it becomes the norm that say your, your Google can hear you, my, my Alexa can hear me in, uh, down the hall and understand what I'm saying. Is this still AI? Because for a while now, computers have been able to do this. So it, it's kind of a tricky, tricky answer. What's the best and worst things about have? Oh, hi, <laughs> uh, what's the best thing and worst thing about having a YouTube channel? Well, the best thing is obviously it gives me a purpose to wake up in the morning. And I don't mean to say that I was like totally depressed without having a YouTube channel. That's not true. I mean, basically, it gives me a really, really strong and happy reason to work towards every day. And it gets me to learn every single day is easily the best thing. And to help people, I, I mean, all of you here, thank you so much for joining. For all of you not here that are subscribed, I still appreciate that. Um, it gives me a reason to, to give back to you and to help you out to learn every single day. But the worst thing is that, you know, there's always something in the back of my mind saying like, you should be doing this. And the the, the amount of YouTube growth has been exceptional over the last little bit. And it's hard not to realize that or not to think about that if I put in another two hours today, that I could get a lot more output if I did this every single day. And so that continued work is exactly the reason that it's working, but it's also the reason that it's kind of bugging me inside. But it's a happy kind of bugging where it's like a reinforcement, a, a positive reinforcement rather than a like like a sad kind of thing, if that makes sense. 
how do I retain information? I do courses, videos, lectures, but I don't make notes. I, yep, you're sick of making notes. I 100% don't make notes. I close my eyes. I think about what they said and I really try to visualize what's going on. I could write to you like a, a, a big essay about simple linear regression, multiple linear regression right now, because I've thought about it for so long and, and I've, I've really learned these things just by staring at equations, uh, listening to people talk about them. And no, I, I freaking hate notes because it's basically like you're you're trying to pretend that you learned it because you wrote it down, uh, but really you don't understand something unless it's in your brain because you wake up every day, basically you're refreshed and, and not thinking about any sort of written material. You just you you are what you are. You have you know what you know. So I don't make notes. I would just make sure you understand everything as well as you can. And to, to understand it, sure, you might have to write it down. Like you might have to you might have to play it with some some writing. I love using my iPad to, to draw stuff, uh, but that's not as so I can study it every single day. That's so I can picture it in the moment and then store it for later. Hey, Greg, is there any projects where we use machine learning? And <laughs> um, probably, I, I mean, I haven't Googled that specific combination of machine learning and blockchain. I kind of knew that uh, some questions were going to start arising about blockchain on my channel because it's it's separate to machine learning, but it's an extremely notable topic. And I might expand into that at one point. It's not something I know a ton about, although, yes, I've definitely watched some videos to understand in general what, what the blockchain is doing and why we want it. Uh, but it's I'm sure to answer your question. Yes, there, there is opportunities there. If there aren't already existent blogs, I bet you there are. And if there's not, then then yes, I, I would think about combining those things for sure. Your tips to stay motivated. Yeah, I mean, it's mostly just like, like making sure that you enjoy what you do. I've said this a million times, but I'll say it a million times more is you're, you're not going to stay motivated unless you like what you do you might still work towards your goal. So I'm not to say that if you don't enjoy everything, it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily be lying in bed doing nothing. You might still be working towards it, but to stay motivated, that really means that like you, you, by definition, you, you want to work towards this. And to do that, it's basically, uh, I'll, I'll say again, go put your work on YouTube, get addicted to some uh, Gary V. I know Arshia, you, <laughs> you hear about Gary V a lot from me, but it's because he says get addicted to the process and to do that you have to get addicted to something like youtube subscribers uh some sort of if you don't want to get tied up too much with numerical metrics but they can definitely guide you with all the support that you get from online uh it, it's hard not to care about something unless other people are caring about it. it it's not impossible but it's a lot easier to to really push forward if you can just kind of gather everyone's opinion whether it's positive or negative and and gear your content towards what they want to see of course follow your dream don't just listen to the haters and do exactly what you can to avoid that but you should definitely listen to people's feedback and then that'll guide you and motivate you to work towards whatever you want to do uh thanks so much for coming great to see you answer okay sounds like you're leaving <laughs> you're very welcome that's totally okay uh thank you yes no problem Krish, probably not Krish Naik. If you are, that's cool. Please make some videos about portfolio projects. Well, I, I mean, your your portfolio is your like it's your everything. So I know what you're trying to say. Get get some projects. Um, I I can do that for sure. Um, various different projects again should come from you. And I, I will give you some examples. That's a good idea. Actually, you're right to show uh, various ideas of me coming up myself with different ideas. But again, pr projects in particular, the, the, the ideas should come from you if it can. Um, I have a background in physics. Cool. Oh, I missed. Sorry, I missed one. I'll get to that after. What's your opinion about using MATLAB? I don't like MATLAB. Done. Uh, no, so it's it's great for learning. It's matrix laboratory, and so you know it's it's about linear algebra and it's combining that with calculus, which is the base of everything, including machine learning itself, very much so. So, uh, MATLAB is great for education. It's going to help you. That's why Andrew Ng's machine learning course is in. Uh, it's called Octave, which is just free MATLAB because MATLAB is commercial. Um, so I don't like MATLAB 
myself, but I, I think that it's good for learning and to you should kind of if you choose to go down that route that route, I would kind of leave the ship early because I would jump onto Python R or, or Julia possibly. I have a background in physics. I'm trying to learn data science on my own, but easy to get freelancing job. So how easy is it to get freelancing job with your own skills? I mean, it's a freelance is, you know, it's kind of a, just a catch all term for doing work for somebody. And, you know, maybe you can, maybe you can cold email people cold as in just kind of, they don't know you at all. You're straight up just emailing them, uh, messaging people on LinkedIn, you know, you might get an opportunity there uh, to really become in, in I, I've done some freelance stuff as well, just because people have contacted me through my YouTube, which is you know somewhat popular at this point. Uh, it, it's tough to get that work because it's just algorithmically tough to find you like like it's just you can think about it as a probability of them searching for you and finding you it's, it's very very low at, at the beginning and so it, it, it's possible but you might you would probably have to email people a lot to to show off your skills be like i got this project uh i can see that you you might want freelance work in this area i did a project specific to that would it be helpful Arshia, you're not leaving. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're just thanking me. Okay. Yes. Thank. Yeah. No problem. Yes. Uh, where am I? I have a, no, I'm a career changing phase from mechanical to data science and you're struggling in Python. That's okay. I'm pretty confident in my math skills. Any suggestions to get a job? Well, I mean, it's, I'm going to give a stupid answer. I, I mean, get good at Python and that's totally okay that you're not good at Python already. It, it, it's, there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of different places to get better at Python. And so I would just search them out. You know, I don't need to list them because if you Google how to learn Python, a million things are going to pop up. Uh, but you, you know, just practice including stuff like the algorithms, uh, kind of canonical books. Why do I keep saying canonical? Uh, the, the algorithms and data structures books, even if they're not in Python, that'll still help you become a better Python programmer for sure. If you don't know that stuff already, uh, like time complexity, that kind of thing. And Python in particular, uh, I, I mean, yes, there's a lot of opportunities. Even the, the, just the Python documentation is actually very, very strong. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, mate. <laughs> You're welcome, mate. All the best in your YouTube journey. I wish you keep going. Well, thank you. I appreciate that a lot. I hope so. Krish retracted your message. <laughs> Goodbye. Not Krish Naik. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be funny. Okay. I'm caught up. I, uh, you guys like to run away before, because I don't have any questions because you guys aren't, guys aren't asking questions. So I need you to fill me up before, before people get bored and, uh, yeah, come on, come on, let's go. Anything. Okay, Greg, should I focus more on data analysis for grabbing an on-campus placement, or should I also dive into data science slash ML? Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of both. So data analytics is great. There's there's a lot of just learn SQL. Uh, as soon as you learn SQL, honestly, you're, you're possible to get a lot of jobs. But uh, it, I would recommend that you learn deep learning if you can. And it's not really as difficult as people say. It's really masked behind a bunch of buzzwords like AI and uh, machine learning, deep learning, supervised learning. It sounds all daunting because they're all words that you don't know. But I would definitely recommend learning deep learning to get a job in, in anything really right now, anything, anything data analysis. Even if it doesn't say deep learning in the job itself, as long as it's something above like, you know, a base business intelligence developer, something that's analytics related, uh, deep learning will really, really help. Uh, but analysis, I mean, definitely learn Spark for sure. Spark and Pi Spark will, will help a lot to, to get that. Going from MATLAB to Pandas, Python is easy. Python is better for data manipulation and ML. The sooner you switch, the better. Yes, okay, I understand. Not a question, just adding. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, I agree, actually. Uh, MATLAB to Python is pretty easy, for sure. Uh, it's it's not easy because you don't know a programming language, but the, the switch in particular is not going to be overly difficult. It's just you have to put in the work to learn the things you need to learn. What are some of the biggest difference between data science roles? And I've been doing way too much statistics and I read that as maximum likelihood uh, estimation roles. 
machine learning engineering, I would assume, uh, is so it's very tricky because data science is it, it encompasses everything. You know, I want it to be the I want its definition to be the study of data, uh, and so machine learning often is counted if you're a data scientist. I, I, I was called a data scientist in my last job, and I definitely did machine learning and deep learning every single day. Uh, so it's a very, very tricky question. But essentially, the, the main difference is that if you're a machine learning engineer, you're definitely like every single day, you are working towards like a deep learning model, you're training models. Uh, as a data scientist, there's a usually a lot more like just analysis type work. And that's why there's a really weird crossover with data science first analyst, because a lot of the work that a data scientist does probably does a, a data analyst would do as well, but it also commonly means they do machine learning. So very, very tricky. Um, what's <laughs> okay. I'll, I saw or she, I saw yours. That's funny. I'll get to that shortly. Uh, why is learning data structures important? It seems really abstract. Well, you know, the more abstract something is, is generally good. Uh, I, I know that seems kind of silly because, you know, there's stuff like pure math, which is ridiculously abstract and hard to apply, but it's nice for things to be abstract because then that means it applies to pretty much everything. And so data structures and algorithms, that means, you know, think about literally anything. Anything is either data, which, which means something, it's, it's a thing, or an algorithm, which means it's a set of rules applied to that data to do something. And so in particular in computer science, if you're going to go down to, to a more to a more lower level, it, it really talks about why things are fast, why it's useful to be as a developer. If you're asking the question, why do I need to learn data structures and algorithms? Uh, because on the job, I don't, I'm not going to write something like implement a heap uh, in, in my job. But it'll make you understand how to solve the problem because then you think algorithmically and you can say, I should use a dictionary here because it has an O of one or constant search time, or I should use this data structure here. So it's not about uh, memorizing how to implement like merge sort and, and writing up the time complexity as a big calculation as to why it's, it's N log N or whatever. The point is to do all this stuff so that you understand what you need to use when you are at the job at an abstracted level, just to use the same word. Uh, where am I? Yes. Okay. So what's my university major favorite course? Uh, yes. So I'm a statistics major with, I guess, a minor in computer science. You know, it's statistics used a lot of computer science anyway. But um, my favorite course is probably regression because like linear regression, I'm also taking generalized, basically generalized linear models, which is non-linear regression kind of it's basically just converting something non-linear to linear and then performing linear regression uh, i would definitely say linear regression because that is really the fundamentals behind all of these fancy terms like artificial intelligence big data a lot of the time it's doing some sort of linear regression of course i said big data which we also took a spark course which um i, I really enjoyed that course as well but uh, yeah, there's a lot of nice, uh, nice courses in there. I'd probably say linear regression so that you understand uh, the fundamentals behind really everything that is that is above. Uh, what language would I recommend to learn data structures? Most tutorials use Java. Yeah, it's because Java is ridiculously popular and it's going to be forever. Um, not so good at Java. <laughs> Me neither. I made an Android app once, but I wouldn't call myself a Java virtuoso. Um, so Python is unfortunately a bad example to learn data structures because it's, its data structures are very kind of mixed together. Like a list in Python kind of covers like so many different things. Uh, it's not, it's kind of an array. It's kind of uh, like a stack. It's kind of a queue. So you, Python is the best language to do so many things, but it's not amazing for educational data structures and algorithms. I mean, algorithms, sure, but data structures, I would probably do C or C++ because that's when you understand the memory management of pointers. And it's even though when you switch to something like Python and even Java, you're not going to need pointers and memory allocation. It's really good to understand those things, which is really what data structures and algorithms is built off of. So I'd probably say C or C++. Can you recommend some SQ, uh, Excel and SQL certification? Uh, so I always kind of 
I don't know how to use an, <laughs> not use an inappropriate word here. Um, I am not polite about Excel certifications because I don't think that it's the future. I do have in my data science ranked things there, um, data science certifications ranked Excel comes up once or twice. And I think I rank it pretty lowly, but you know, that's just me being biased. Of course, Excel is still a useful tool. Uh, and I don't know off by hand the Excel certifications, but I'm sure if you Google it from Coursera, uh, there's one or two that are really popular compared to the rest. Uh, SQL, I, I mean, so many of them do SQL. There's one, I'm not sure if any of them are actually called SQL certification, but you know, there's Google Analytics certificate and a lot of other stuff. Like if you Google big data, it's SQL is going to come up uh, quite a bit. Okay. Uh, I need to switch my job and I have, you need to switch your job. <laughs> you, you want to switch your job and I have one year of time. Okay. So you, you really want to switch your job. Okay. And I need a job fang. Okay. I'm sorry. I, it's so you don't need a fang company job. You don't need to work at Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, or Google. Uh, it's great. I understand why you would want to, but you probably don't have to unless you, for some reason, need to make 200k a year to survive. Uh, so I, 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 it's sorry, it's hard for me not to to kind of butt in there and give my strong opinion. But the idea to answer the question, what should I learn data science and data structures and algorithms to to get those types of jobs well you need to be really really good and to get those level jobs uh you kind of need a master's or phd to to of course there's there's stories of people getting through without that kind of thing various ways of uh like maybe having an internship in school and then you switch to that uh, you kind of merge internally and other ways of just being really famous and kind of bumping in without any education at all but you kind of need to do a, a master's and maybe even a phd to get work at fan companies and the material itself you need to know really all of the state-of-the-art stuff like up to the neural networks if you're doing machine learning including you need probably need to do probability-based questions uh, like 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 difficult university level probability questions to, to really get in there there's going to vary a lot but there's that and also you there's a decent chance that you just need to be an insanely good programmer like even for a machine learning type job in a fang level company you might need like 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 cracking the coding interview i practiced out Al algo expert these kind of coding interview things that, that are going to get you there is it possible to get a job by practicing hands-on 15 hours a day and you have a good work ethic 15 hours. I don't work 15 hours a day, just to let you know, for one month, uh, for one month. Well, uh, it's a funny question because maybe uh, 15 hours a day, you can do a heck of a lot to get a job. So if you're just saying a job, there's a lot of jobs that just need machine learning, uh, you know, Spark SQL type analysis. And sure, uh, it's possible. I, I would let you know that it's probably unlikely, even if you work your butt off for that long, it's probably unlikely that you get a job after a month, but uh, it's possible. You can learn a heck of a lot. And even if you fail to uh, fail to get a job, I, I commend you for working that hard, but don't get crushed after that month and be like, darn, I really thought this would get me a job. What do I do now? You've learned a bunch of skills. Just take it steady, uh, work, work your butt off. Of course, I support that, but uh, don't be too disappointed if something doesn't happen. Uh, I'm currently in my third year of engineering, so should I focus more on machine learning or rather I should focus, well, what are you trying to do? So I'll, I'll, I'll read your question later. What are, you, what are you trying to accomplish? What is the good beginner's book for statistics in data science? Yeah, so I understand these terms get kind of bogged down and weird together where you say like the data science and statistics or they're kind of sort of the same thing or not. Uh, so the, there's a lot of famous books in statistics, actually. Uh, you know, I, the linear regression book, I, I said that my course was in linear regression. I, it's a very common book for that. Um, for data science itself, I, I mean, it's more so famous books in... I can think of a lot of machine learning based ones like the deep learning book for statistics itself they might be kind of boring and it, it might not be as like that there's not really a, a bunch of good books for like 
data science, like modern data science, but without the statistics point of view, because there's people don't really get that statistics is a huge chunk of data science, but it's more so in the theory rather than actually applying that type of thing. So the, the tricky part, a data science book, most of them are going to be very practical. Okay, so uh, I think it's O'Reilly, that, that red and white covered book. There's a lot of those for data science, like work in NLP and that type of thing. Uh, and statistics, there's also a lot of canonical books for that. And man, take a shot every time Greg says uh, canonical. <laughs> what company should, uh, what company expect to someone, what company would expect someone who are applying to junior machine? Okay, I think I get, sorry. Uh, I think I got your question. So basically what would a company expect from someone from a junior machine learning engineer? Uh, so a junior machine learning engineer is, you know, someone who probably knows neural network models. You might be doing some forecasting work. Uh, so maybe you're using like an LSTM neural network model. Uh, it varies a lot, but machine learning, you know, maybe computer vision, you might be using convolutional neural networks to do either object detection or uh, just like object classification. If you basically, if you were to take the deep learning specialization, you would kind of see there's a, a bunch of different common roles that you would fit in, like computer vision or natural language processing. And also, you know, there's also a lot of room just for various regression and not necessarily like a linear regression. There's very deep learning common uh, modern techniques of doing regression that you would also probably be in charge of. But your day-to-day -day would probably be like they already have some model in there and you're kind of tuning it. Or maybe your job is to come up and try various different models to solve a forecasting. By the way, if you don't know what forecasting is, I just mean predicting uh, continuous values in the future. And, you know, various classification tasks, like what class does this belong to, whether it's a picture or maybe some clustering. So machine learning does involve clustering as well. And so maybe you're given some variables and you want to figure out like what are the patterns in the data. You might you might look at that as a mach junior machine learning engineer. Hey Greg, you're doing great work. Keep it up. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Ah, yes, I remember this, uh, you from LinkedIn. So does experience in software engineering and not specifically data science help in getting jobs in data science after masters? Yes, absolutely. And if you're going that extra way to get a master's as well, you're you're likely able to get one of the better jobs. And many of those better jobs would definitely need more software engineering experience. A lot of people don't uh, seem to not think that data science is heavily a software job. Like you are doing, you are writing software constantly. That is your job. And so whether it is, you know, doing the algorithm, algorithm data structure stuff or not, it doesn't matter. All of that software stuff like web development, um, cloud, all the cloud stuff, looking up models, deployment, uh, Git, absolutely. And all of the just, again, data structures and algorithm stuff, that'll really help you out for sure. So yes, the answer is absolutely yes. Are there good, are there any good books to revise ML algorithms and maths behind? Yeah. Okay. So there are some books, which I haven't read that get a lot of references. Uh, I forgot the names and I could, I could come back to you on that one where basically they, they, there's a lot of different books that just kind of summarize different algorithms. And there is a famous one. I forget the name you might find it if you search like machine learning algorithms book. Uh, but yes, absolutely. F for taking notes, most of that theory stuff, you're not really going to need to memorize, but there is some stuff that you might want as a reference for like, you know, if you want to predict a continuous value, what kind of algorithms could I use for that? If I want to do forecasting, what algorithms could I use for that? Uh, and so on. So I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll try to get back to you on that one. And if I forget, um, send me a message. Is it possible to get a data science internship in a month by practicing for 10 hours? Didn't I answer that? So that... Is that a very similar question? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's the same. Oh, you're the same person. Uh, okay. Is it possible to get a data science internship in a month by practicing for 10 hours daily? It, still, probably not. I, I mean, maybe. I, I, I wouldn't get upset if you don't, but it's worth the effort of trying. Jobs in my country are related to Related to machine learning or very less for other software development engineering roles, the interviewers are more focused upon database management systems, object-oriented programming, 
I assume DSA is data structures and algorithms rather than data science and analytics. Uh, so was a bit confused. Should I continue with ML or not? Well, I, I mean, if you're just trying to get a job, which I understand, like, you, you know, you're not really too worried about what you're trying to do. You're just trying to be, be self-sufficient. Uh, there's currently more software jobs than there are data science jobs pretty much fact i, I mean I, I look at my internship uh, co-op thing which i probably won't look at again because i'm doing my final one but um there is a, definitely a lot of software jobs specifically stuff like front end node uh, node.js slash javascript uh, react angular just just html css there's a lot of jobs in that uh Still, stuff like Java and backend Python, maybe Django Flask development, there's going to be probably more of those than there are uh, machine learning jobs, but that might change in the future. So I, I would be careful about where you want to set yourself up because make sure that you, you're definitely doing what you want to be doing. Uh, hello. Hello. What is your opinion on the apply? Uh, is that the IBM Applied AI course? If you haven't had a look, please have a look at the same and share your views. So uh, once I, I looked at the the description, the syllabus, uh, and actually maybe I could pull that up instead of looking here. Uh, I'm going to just move this to the side for a moment. So the applied AI, I, I think IBM applied AI. Let me go through the syllabus very quickly with you. And let me see for sure what I think about that. Okay, so um, yeah, okay, so it, it's it's this guy, which is great. He's the same as the IBM data science specialization. And the the courses introduction to AI. So it covers let me just look at that. Uh, it's going to cover the basic stuff, of course, a little bit about neural networks, so that makes sense, but not too much. Right, this is why I get bugged by it, is because they're going and forcing you to use IBM Watson, which I'm sorry, unless you're working at IBM or you're in some really weird partnership role with them, uh, you're probably not using Watson. So that's a problem I have with it. Uh, I like the material for sure. I like how much there is in particular. Python for data science. Let me look this. So this is going to be, this is the main thing right here. And I'm sure I've looked at this before, probably part of a bunch of different specializations. Uh, yeah. Okay. It is. So it looks to me like it's a little not as in depth as I think it should be because yeah, I, honestly, I would go instead for the IBM data science, um, IBM data science first if you're a beginner and then if you're trying to learn machine learning and deep learning i would definitely stick with the coursera and during deep learning stuff because it's just not going to be quite as in-depth and there's also the tensorflow certificate afterwards and there's also the advanced tensorflow afterwards which i think is just better than that so uh, i mean it's not bad i'm sure it's great if you wanted to work at ibm which is a lot of jobs in it's a good chance and it would be fine if you like the instructor more than other people that makes sense uh but it's i would not recommend it because there is better options I would recommend. Oh, should I also learn Flask and Django for jobs? Also, I'll comment for that book later. Yes, thank you. Should I also learn Flask and Django for jobs? Yeah, uh, yeah, it doesn't hurt. So don't learn Flask and Django for the sake of learning Flask and Django. Learn it because you're trying to do something and actually make a project with that. So showing that you're able to to turn an app into something is the most useful thing. And so what I mean by that is take your code out of your Jupyter notebook and bring it into an application such as Flask is a really good way to do that because, you know, I can interact native, I can interact natively through either my phone or my computer through a website. And so that's why Flask is useful. That's why people use it. So it can, because it's very versatile. So Flask or Django, uh, it's definitely would help. Uh, I would definitely not recommend against learning it if you can find time to put in so much time to learn it. Absolutely. But I would probably learn it more as a, you know, I, I, I am taking my app and 
deploying it so that people can see it rather than, you know, I, I know Django or whatever, if that makes sense. Uh, thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Uh, do you recommend Coursera Plus? Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I, I think it, they should advertise it a little better. If For those that don't know, Coursera Plus is basically a, a membership so that you can get a bunch of certifications. It doesn't cover absolutely everything, so make sure you look up what is in it uh, before. But for most things, for people doing certifications that you want to go down that route, which uh, depending on who you are, I would very highly recommend. Uh, for someone like me in university, you know, more so based off learning the content and showing it that the point of a certification is to show to people that you know your stuff and however you choose to do that a certification is one good option to do that uh, and so for when you do that you the reason you're probably getting a certification is you were going to get multiple of them because you're trying to show you know multiple things and so coursera plus is a really good option if you want to get more like like more bang for your buck is the term it's a lot cheaper to get multiple if you do the certification or the, the Coursera Plus, even if you don't even use it for most of the year, even if you do it for just a couple months, it's probably still uh, paid good, good use of your money. Planning to use Flask and Heroku for my ML project. Yeah, I, that's yeah, I have a tutorial that follows that. Uh, I, I think I think it's a really good option and django yeah i mean django's fine <laughs> yeah okay uh keep the questions flying i'm probably going to go for another 40 45 minutes something like that my i should get uh, i should probably take a water break pretty soon but uh yep keep the questions flying i'm here and again literally anything like just, just any absolutely anything Uh, well, I think it's important to well, wind down for sure, like just to do something that makes you happy, whatever that is. For me in particular, definitely, I, I just play video games because it's kind of, well, I mean, I've always played video games, but it's it's a really good way to get your mind off of anything because it very controls your thoughts into something in particular, especially if it's a competitive type game, you're very much trying to, to do well in that. So I, I would definitely play video games. Uh, you know, I do every couple hours a night, uh, whatever you want to do, really, that makes you happy. I, I just make sure that you find time to make yourself happy because, you know, you can't, there's some questions about like, if I work 15 hours a day, well, that quite literally means that you are going to bed, waking up, working aside from, you know, maybe breaking a little bit for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, you're working constantly. And so there's not really ever a point in the day when you feel like just clear and you're happy about, you can still be happy working. And if you're happy working for 15 hours a day, then that's awesome. Uh, the, the problem is you might start to burn out if you don't get like an hour or two in the day to actually find something that takes your mind off of anything. Like it just straight into a game or whatever. Uh... What are some of my career goals? Well, I mean, my main goal is to, is to turn this into a job later. So not, maybe not now. Uh, career, I do want to accomplish something like extraordinary. Something in the back of my mind has been there for a long time. For as long as I can remember that, like, I don't just want to have a standard nine to five job, you know, I might be happy in a nine to five job if it's something where I'm really making an impact, like the, my, the job I'm going into, which is, you know, helping people breathe better. That will definitely satisfy the the idea of, you know, I'm helping people and making an impact. Uh, but I want there to be more than that, which is, you know, I, I'm having an impact on many, many different people. And maybe it's even a little bit selfish, but I don't blame anybody for kind of wanting people to you know look up to them a little bit I, I feel very happy when you guys ask me questions and so I, I hope that I can kind of build this up and do e even more every single day are there any free and actually worth it not just for certificates certifications well 
uh, free. Well, so most of Coursera is free. I don't know if you know that. So you can audit courses on Coursera. Uh, I, I did some of them and they are, many of them are worth it, such as Andrew Ng's machine learning course, deep learning, TensorFlow specialization, I believe are all free unless they changed it. Uh, and then the certificates I often recommend because, you know, if you're going to put in all of that work anyway, you probably might as well spend a little bit of money, especially if you got Coursera plus, if you can afford it, if you can't afford it, obviously you do free and that's totally fine. Uh, I just think if you're going to put all of that work anyway, you might as well do it to get the certificate as well. It's probably just a better use of your time. But if you can't afford it, like, I mean, it's totally fine. It is some money, so I, I don't blame you. But yeah, there's a lot of good ones. But any, anything I've listed on Coursera really is, I think, is free. Should I participate more in hackathons or rather focus more on a project and complete it properly? Well, make sure whatever you're putting time into, you really believe in. So I, I, I waste very little time in the day, meaning I don't necessarily work constantly. You know, I take breaks and play, do stuff like video games, but there's a purpose to everything I'm doing, whether it's like a five minute break, you need that. If it's a hackathon, then make sure this is worth doing. So don't just do hackathons because all your friends, you know, you're in this kind of ecosystem where everyone's like, oh, if you're not doing hackathons, then, you know, you're not uh, showing your skills to these companies. And that's how you get a job is because they see that you got first place and you can put it on your resume that you got first place in a hackathon. Uh, firstly, you're probably not getting first place in a hackathon, although you absolutely might not say you can't. You're probably not. And it, it's a very ecosystem based thing, meaning like, you know, you, you go and talk to some people and that's what everybody's talking about. And people don't really think about why they're doing it. They just kind of do it because other people are doing it. So make sure that there's actually a reason to it. And if that reason is, you know, it's something big uh, that many people have heard of, or it's something that really interests you, like there's a lot of very specific ones, like I say in healthcare or something like that. If it's important to you, then make sure you put it all into that. Uh, just make sure that whatever you're doing, you have a strong belief that it's something useful and that that'll guide you really. So projects, if you have a good reason to build a project, yeah, put a lot of time to the project or hackathon, whatever it is, put a lot of effort into it because you know it's worth putting effort into. Um, okay, come on peeps, keep it going. <laughs> Thoughts on Kaggle competitions? Well, so I think they're great, actually. Uh, I don't do that many because I just don't really have time to, to do them. Uh, of course, you can find time for anything. Uh, it relates back to my previous question uh, or previous answer, which is if you think it's worth doing, then do it. Do I think Kaggle competitions are good? Yes, actually, they're a very good way to firstly, it's it's actually important in general just to know the famous stuff like the MNIST handwritten digits data set, Titanic, because that's what people talk about. And in interviews, it's nice to be able to talk uh, as well as standing out, but also just the famous what people are familiar with. And that's you're going to get a lot of that from Kaggle, such so as the Iris flower data set or whatever, all that kind of stuff. So it's nice because of that. Uh, and also, it's a really good opportunity to uh, kind of force yourself to learn more than you already know, because it's you're, you're going to really throw yourself in opportunities where you look at something and be like, I have no idea how to do this. And so you can you can Google other solutions. And that's totally fine to learn stuff. You can also just kind of try various solutions. Maybe it does well or maybe it doesn't. It's, it's going to give you... Also, there's a really important idea in machine learning in particular, which is kind of, you know, all solutions are possible. And so it, you could just kind of play around with it over and over again and see like, oh, if I tune the variable, if I, if I do some feature engineering like this, if I, if I split it up into bins like this, or if I use this LSTM model, that makes it a little bit better. And so it's a really good playground for, for trying various things. And, you know, actually trying to get first again, you're probably not going to get first in a Kaggle competition. Uh, if you are, then you probably don't need to watch this live stream because you're, you're better at machine learning than I am. But it's a really good playground for learning everything, trying different models, uh, just throwing yourself into a world where you know nothing, 
and you try to apply what you can to that or go ahead and, and learn more if you want to Google other people's solutions. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go for another 30 minutes, so I'll keep asking away. Can you get a full-time job without having internship experience? Because, like, I mean, I, I say that an internship is a job. Um, if that's what you mean, then, or if you, actually, yeah, clarify. Could, do you mean internship also as, like, possibly a free thing? So, uh, so just, like, working for somebody full-time. Uh, so you can get a full-time job without any prior job, internship experience, whatever it is. Uh it's it, the first one's always difficult like it's even the second and third and fourth it's kind of difficult you have to really build it up uh but you can the most important thing is just to realize that you are your portfolio your your online is your portfolio and so your resume it should just be a bunch of things that you know to get by uh, resume screening and then they see that you're a human you can write stuff clearly but then they should really be amazed by your resume because they click on links and they see who you really are, which is not a piece of paper. It's your LinkedIn, it's your YouTube, it's your, your Medium, your Twitter, your GitHub for many developers. And so, yes, you can. You can definitely get a job in full time. Without that, you need to make sure that your online profile is really, really, really good because then you're actually going to show up in search results when you apply to places. They, they can click on your link and see immediately that you are a good candidate for the job. It's possible, but always difficult to get the first one. I'm, I'm, I'm unable to do both competitive coding and learning data science together. What should I do? Well, I, I mean, sure, you can't do both at the exact same time because they're different things, but they're both worthwhile things to do. Uh, competitive coding is going to make you better at developing 100%. Like, It'll it'll apply to all the machine learning and data science type stuff. No matter what you do, powering through these lead code problems. When when you say competitive coding, I'm pretty pretty much just gonna say it's it's uh, lead code stuff. And so all of that is really gonna be very beneficial to machine learning. But of course, you can't do both of them. So which one do you want to do? Well. I mean, it depends what you're trying to accomplish. Like if you're trying to get a job in machine learning, then probably should focus more efforts on machine learning, a little bit less on competitive coding, although it is helpful. If you're trying to get a more en engineering software development job, probably should put more effort into the competitive coding. It just depends what you want to do. Okay, I mean, if there's no more questions, that's totally fine. I can go. I think it's bedtime for, for a lot of you, uh, so that's okay. I'm going to stick around for another five minutes for sure in case there's any questions. Uh, and if so, if not, then I'm going to drop off. That's okay. Yeah, I should get some water. <laughs> Uh, no problem. Yep. I, I hope that's, um, I hope that answered some questions. Uh, anytime, seriously, like I'm going to start popping up in random live streams. I'm going to schedule some stuff too. So even more people come, uh, yeah. Anytime you have a question, like just anything, whether it's big or small, like that's totally okay. Hey, Greg, are you not getting my question? What do you mean? I haven't seen any messages from you. Sorry, I guess that one worked. Can you try again here? You're very welcome.
Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I don't see why. No, I'm not getting your questions. I haven't seen any. I mean, I see. I see. Thank you very much for your efforts. And I, I thought I answered the IBM applied AI question. But oh, can you please have me look at this course? I did. I did. Did you not? Sorry, did you not see that? I I, I pulled up the the IBM. Were you not talking about the IBM applied AI? Ah, uh, that question, I, oh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sad that many people left already, but of course I want to answer that. Um, so how to improve communication skills for the role of data scientist? Uh, uh, yeah, only a couple of people left here, but I so want to answer that question in full for whoever, including you, of course, is important to me. So best possible question you could ask, because any success at all is 99% dependent on how you talk to people and how you communicate your results, whether it's through your videos or your writing or your resume or just the way of talking is you can get someone you can honestly do not so well in a technical interview, depending on who you're talking to. If it's Google, then sure, they might just look at your technical interview. But so many different companies you can sell over just because you talk to them and you sound genuine, you sound very excited and happy and confident and clear, concise, and you understand your audience. So you're saying the things that make you very uh, like good candidates, but just a nice person is the main point. So firstly, to actually answer the question of how can you do this, uh, I would definitely practice in front of a camera. Uh, I got even better at, at communication after doing a lot of YouTube stuff, kind of forced me to, to look into the camera and say, I'm honestly not uncomfortable, like I don't care. Uh, and so that really comes across in interviews in particular. To really practice it, if English in particular, so you, you do have to master English itself. Uh, and I, I'm not familiar with the ways of doing that. I just I mean, you could probably guess that I was, I've was i been decent at English for a long time, and it just comes naturally to me, and it's the most important language to know. So you have to master English however you want to do that. After you are a very good English speaker, you do have to really practice at communicating your results in different viewpoints. So you have to think about the audience and give your answer depending on who they are, and you might want to ask questions to, to say your interviewer, if they if you were answering a question about some uh, app that you made, you have to make sure that they understand what you're talking about is the main thing. So you might want to ask questions like, are you familiar with this? Are you familiar with this? A and then guide your answer. If they look bored, make it quick and, and exciting. If, if they look like they're interested in what you're saying, you know, keep it going, talk about what, um, you know, all the different points of the app that, that you're making that you made. And just the main thing is to get comfortable with talking in general uh, realize that it doesn't matter when you screw up and nobody's judging you. And if they are judging you, then screw them. It honestly doesn't matter. Uh, and then after that, you will be confident and then just know your audience to say what you want to say. Uh, is Tableau also important uh, to learn? Man, I keep coming back. Uh, Tableau is... It's kind of important. I mean, so it does show up in a lot of jobs. It's a company that's growing. Uh, it's a nice tool for sure. Is it essential? No, you just need to know data visualization and they might exist and use Tableau. Like they might already be using Tableau. Therefore, they put it as a job requirement where it's like you must know Tableau. Uh, not really. If you want to learn Tableau, it's a great tool for visualization. There's also many other ones, just like even Plotly in 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 Python or R, I think, is quite good. There's many different tools to do visualization. So it's a useful skill. It'll help you out. It's not. It's something that'll you'll, you'll learn generic concepts. You'll learn a particular tool that is definitely used. But I'm not sure if you really need need Tableau. Even enrolled yourself in Coursera courses, good. For communication, will they work? 
Uh, I mean, sure. It's it is important. It depends what level you're at. So, if you if you are really struggling with communication, like you're you're not able to talk very well at all, then sure, uh, listening to people talk, uh, hearing what they have to say, leadership advice. Like I watch presentations on like Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, which you know he's a terrible speaker, but why do they? Why why do we think about? why do we believe in what they're saying is very important to me. So yes, I absolutely listen to people uh, about how they talk. So that that's that's great for any different stage of where you are. Um, communication courses, once you're at a certain point, is you're going to kind of plateau because instead of practicing the skills hands-on, like just talking and getting comfortable, you, I think you might be wasting a little bit of time listening to people talk about communication rather than actually communicating, which is the best thing you could do. And Although, I mean, COVID-19 has been here for a couple of years, which really stunted uh, like physical, like talking to people, like actually going up and talking to people, which, you know, nobody's really that comfortable with internally. Uh, it's a really good practice to get to fake uh, to fake the confidence with people. You know, it makes it look like you're interested in what's, uh, what, what they're saying when maybe you're not, you know, all these different things, which, you know, going on in your head, you think people are judging you when they're really not. Uh, practicing communication is the better way to do that rather than just listen to people's courses. Hello, hello. YouTube recommended me your channel. That's good for YouTube. Good job, YouTube. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> I haven't started exploring videos yet. Hopefully it'll be educated. It is educative uh, for sure. And uh, easy to learn is, uh, I, I believe so. I mean, I try my best to make it. I, for reference, just so you know my schedule, I, I post a machine learning video in my course every single day. Uh, and I try to fit in whatever I can as well, including, you know, anything on the topics of big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence, but not just from like a technical point of view, although there's a lot of technical points, uh, more so like, you know, helping you out, guiding you along your journey, motivation, understanding, you know, the process of applying to jobs and the different certifications, kind of the whole ecosystem rather than just like technical advice. This pandemic, I guess I'm staying longer because the views are going up and I don't want to leave. So this pandemic has impacted communication skills a lot. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh is right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it absolutely has. Please put my LinkedIn. I, you can Google Gregory Hawk on LinkedIn. Uh, oh, please put your link. Um, it seems you're not getting many, my question. Oh, well, I don't understand because... You, do you mean getting your questions as in like, um, like I'm not understanding them because it just, if I'm not understanding them, I mean, just ask it a little clearer. I'm sorry about that. Um, I, I don't want to message too much privately because I want to help out everybody that's listening right now, as well as everybody that's going to watch this after. So, um, I don't want to do too much private conversation. Please try to ask as many questions as you can here. If I didn't understand your question, um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. And other people, come on, lots of people watching. Ask some questions. I'm gonna keep going as long as as long as you can. Actually, uh, stay here. Please don't run away. I am gonna get a water break. I'll be back in like 30 seconds. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> I just realized I'm not even listening to anything with these headphones, so I have no idea why I'm wearing them. <laughs> I also just kicked something over there. Um, we're saying that's very kind of you. Can you, you can tell me in Hindi. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's totally fine.
Oh my gosh, I just realized that I'm drinking from an invisible cup. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You can almost, you can kind of see the outline. There. <laughs> okay, come on. Ask some questions. Let's go. And yes, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. I'm God. <laughs> does he drink? Does he drink from invisible cups? No, it's not something like you were not understanding my question. By not getting my questions, I mean that there's some problem with the live. I have been posting my questions and you're not. Well, I don't understand because I, I see these messages like all the time. So if I can see these messages, are you doing something different with the questions? Like, I don't quite understand. I am taking a sip. <laughs> Hi Raj, I'm confused between software engineering and data science. My job is backed related, back end related, I assume is what you mean. Uh, and I am learning data science, but it's, it's coming too hectic to manage both. Okay, well, so you're confused between which one you wanna focus on, software engineering or data science. Well, I mean, I'm a data science channel, so like, obviously my passion is in data science. That's not necessarily your passion. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not going to speak negatively about just software development because, you know, my job and nobody else's, everybody else's job right now would be nothing if we didn't have software engineers pretty much. So there's a lot of opportunities there for sure. Uh, it's just do what makes you happy. And if you don't know what makes you happy, Make sure that you've you've really thought about it, tried various things, taken different courses, uh, think about the applications and, and how difficult it is to get different opportunities. Uh, just make sure that you know for sure what you want to do. And I can't really say between data science or engineering or software engineering, obviously, I would say go machine learning. I think the future is in machine learning, deep learning, especially reinforcement learning is fascinating and really cool. Uh, it, it's going to really take off soon. So of course, uh, there's, there's, I would recommend that, but that's not necessarily the right path for you. Yes, with the question, I'm posting a link and that you are not, oh, it probably kills links. Yeah, so YouTube's not gonna like uh, people putting links in the chat, that would be why. So I would just, just write your question in text in the chat. One last question, which university is best to pursue my master's in data science? Well, um, I, I mean, so many really good ones. Uh, genuinely, most people would have heard of the top universities. If that's the question you're going to ask, I'm going to give the the obvious answer, which is you know Stanford, MIT, Harvard, blah blah, blah uh, Caltech. In Canada, there's also University of Waterloo is really well known. Uh, there's just a couple like uh, like UBC. Uh, McGill, that kind of thing. So, I, I mean, there's a lot of well-known ones. Even University of Alberta is actually pretty well-known for machine learning. They they did the reinforcement learning uh, course on Coursera and all the stuff in the U.S. There's there's also, you know, one or two uh, various ones around the world, like Imperial College London, I would assume. Uh, I'm not super versed with, you know, stuff that's not in North America, like the popular U.S. and, and Canadian ones, but Outside, there's, you know, only a few that people really, really well known. Uh, and of course, there's so many that, you know, you 
most of those, to be quite honest, unless your grade average is insane, you're probably not getting in. And, uh, you know, mine's probably not uh, good enough to get into those places either. Not that I would even want to do that. And, and if you would want to do that, then try your butt off to get good grades and then accept whatever masters you can. Because to be honest, the point of a master's is mostly just a certification that says like you are able to get particular jobs like say fang company level jobs uh and so after you get that certificate or whatever you want to call it degree from a master's wherever it is it's good enough probably to at least apply to most jobs if you're really trying to be like an elitist with uh, caring about your research at the top school, then of course, I'm going to recommend the top ones. That's my answer I'll give. But for most people, probably not what you on a, you want to actually do or you're even able to do. It's okay. There's so many different schools that most people don't know that worldwide. That's totally fine. I don't have a Discord server. I think yes, I would think links links are blocked. Just to name just name the course name and the website. Yeah, yeah, Chris, you're right. Uh Greg, do you have a Discord server? I do not. So why would I I know some people do. Uh and I guess the reason is because you guys can chat uh like related to my community. Uh you know, maybe in the future. I don't think that it would be quite active enough. If you could give me a good reason as to why I would want to do that, then I totally could. Not that it's a lot of effort. It's obviously, uh, it, it's 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 totally fine for me to do it. I'm just not sure if it's something that's that's worthwhile. It might be. Can you share links for real world data science projects which we can take reference from and build actual stuff? Yeah. So, I I mean, I've done a couple. And I, you can check my GitHub if you want to see some of the stuff that I've done. Uh, my YouTube has obviously taken over most of my life. There's a lot of other people that I would recommend for that, and obviously I don't want to, I don't want to steer you away from my channel. But there's so many developers that are doing very fascinating things, and that's all they want to do is kind of experiment with different projects, uh, build various tutorials and show people how to do these things, which is what I'm trying to do. And so I will continue to make videos of that genre. I have the normal stuff like Titanic. Um, and I do have, if you check my data science final project video, that should give you a lot of insight <clears throat> into various uh, like possibilities. Uh, I did some clustering, which I, I, the point of it was to dream up something random. And so you should be able to do the same, which is just really think about like, um, I'm interested in this. I should make a project in this. Uh, and if you really don't know, then yeah, go ahead and Google other people's projects. That's, that's totally okay. And, and I do have a couple on, on my channel if you want to check those out. Which areas do you believe are still underexplored by machine? That's a really cool question. Which do areas do I believe are still underexplored by machine learning and data science, like the geosciences, biosciences? Uh, well, <laughs> everything. Okay, so in specific, it would probably take me a moment to come up with some very specific terms. You can see it's kind of getting popular all over the place. DeepMind is, is doing reinforcement learning in a lot of biological stuff right now. So there's going to be a lot of that. Um, even in just playing games is a very popular way to look at, say, reinforcement learning or a common use case for it. But even then, even in video games, a lot of artificial intelligence is still not actually uh, being done in, with machine learning because it's it's difficult with a three dimensional world, and so I think there's a lot of opportunities in that if you want to try and you know maybe make a startup that's related to uh, making machine learning in video games. Uh, in terms of the real world, like if you're not just living in a computer, honestly, I'm sure pretty much everywhere. Like I'm I'm not gonna go spouting off all my ideas of how to make a million dollar project because maybe I'll do that one day, but uh, there's 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 so many like I, even if i just look outside and see what i'm looking at buildings okay analyzing instead of just from like a constructional construction <laughs> what am i saying the um what's the term i'm trying to think of civil engineering okay all of that is going to be very very like five years of theory in this particular field and i'm sure i don't know why i don't know i'm not going to say the exact thing but 
I'm sure if you look at that field, there is very good ways to apply machine learning to that field. And same with everything else that you think has absolutely no idea, no nothing to do with machine learning. I almost guarantee you there's really good ways to do that because all of this stuff that has not been involved with machine learning, we have done by hand. Humans have thought about it and produced real data. That means you can apply supervised learning to the problem. And so find that data, do that thing. Really think about it. If you're asking this question uh, to like think about making a startup or whatever, I'm purposefully not going to say particular ideas because then it would start something interesting. But so many different fields. Okay. Um, you're very welcome. Is it okay if we pursue masters in analytics instead of data science for the role of analyst? Is it okay if we pursue masters in analytics instead? Oh, masters in analytics instead of masters in data science for an analyst role. Oh yeah, I mean like so. There's so many different terms. Remember, these are just terms that, if you were to think about the university or college's point of view, they are trying to get people interested in what they're doing. So, even in my school, University of Waterloo, started using the data science term only a few years ago. And they're just putting something out there that says, uh, this is a master's in data analytics. And what an actual master's is, or any degree, is what it is. Like, it's it's who you interact with. It's the things that you do. It's the, the things also that you don't know that you're able to do. Like, um, you know, you can see opportunities to make an impact in a certain field and do something really interesting. Uh, and that's dependent on the person you're with, as well as the kind of ecosystem that you're surrounded with. So... It's just a term, and from a term point of view, of course, I know that there is a perspective to that. Like you do want to think about what terms people actually think about when you're applying to jobs. So, like you have a data analytics. This is probably the question you really want to be to answer. Is you know if you're applying to an analyst role, is it okay if it says on your degree that you got a master's in analytics? The answer is yes. It's totally fine. Master's in data science. Yes, it's totally fine. As long as it's not something that, you know, is totally unrelated, people aren't going to worry too much about those terms. Uh, it's good to stay with the modern ones if you can. Like if I was to do, I don't even know if it's a thing, but a master's in like deep learning right now, that's what I would go for right now. Um, but as long as you stay relatively modern, something like analytics is, is totally fine. It's a very acceptable and widely used term, so that's okay. Uh, Bruno, you're very, very welcome. I'm happy to help. Uh, if anybody else is anyone else can ask some questions or oh, I should probably get to work at some point <laughs> I love drinking out of this invisible cup actually yeah I'll, I'll finally limit it unless this really this really shoots up I'm gonna do uh, you're very welcome. I'm going to do two, I'll say two more questions unless, unless the viewer count goes way up, I'll stop at two questions. So anything. Oh, uh, she, a best part about your life. <laughs> I thought that was a question where you're saying best part about, um, I know, right? Like it's, that's the, I actually have like a huge collection of invisible things right now. Like this is an invisible cup. This is an invisible mug. And even my, my, my Xbox controller, like this is, this is literally half. This is what an Xbox controller looks like if the front is green and the white is back. <laughs> actually white. <laughs> you can see the buttons a little bit. Uh, okay, well, that was two questions. So I got, we'll see if that's uh, that's the last thing I do. Not sure. AppliedAI.com. Please have a look. Oh. Applied AI. Okay. Uh, I don't know what this is, so... Sure, I'll take a look. Hopefully, this isn't some sketchy website. Applydai.com X for business risk modeling. Okay, uh, I guess I can show you guys this as well. Yeah. Okay, I mean this is the website. What would you? <laughs> Actually, I know it's pretty cool. Uh, so what about this? Uh, what what can what would you like me to answer about this? I guess in the meantime, I'll just kind of take a look, but is it, is it, 
education. Not means I'm. What? Dot means ap applied. Is that, is, did I go to the wrong website? Applied AI. Yeah, that's, that's the web. I'm on the right website, right? I, yes, I know. <laughs> ah, it's okay. Um, I'll bring this up if you ask again. Uh, so basically, uh, Yes, I'll answer your question. So yeah, I am on the right website. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. Like, uh, sorry, is my stream? Yes, it is. Okay, so uh, applied AI is an Indian course. Is that a course? I don't know. Sorry. Uh, maybe maybe next time. Um, which Python library required more uh, for data science? So. Yeah, there's a lot of really great libraries, and oh, it says my stream is sorry. That's not what you're supposed to see. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm being, I'm spazzing. Um, it's saying that my stream's bit rate is not fast enough, so I should probably change that. Is actually yeah, I should really ask since since it's the first time. How's the how's the quality? Because I was hoping that this is like 60 FPS, you know, it's really smooth, uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution. So is this, is the quality good or is anyone having some issues? Quality is great. Okay, good. Can, ev can everyone please, everyone watching, please just say like how how good it looks so it's very very useful yes not worst quality it's okay okay good it is okay all right sounds like it's fine oh i've been off for almost two hours now it's fine okay great thank you everybody i really appreciate that uh so yes let me answer that question so uh the python library quality is excellent okay frank thank you very much i appreciate that so best python library for data science well just for your own i'll answer it two two different ways is one if you're just trying to do your own thing you know be be useful as a data scientist versus what a company what a company would really look for uh and th there's obviously some correlation there but it's a little bit different of a question uh for doing your own thing is definitely uh pandas is really really useful to know not and, and you don't need to be a master in it like i you you might be tempted after i say this to go learn everything you can about pandas which obviously would be very very useful and it would help a lot uh but you really just need to be able to be comfortable with each of the libraries so that you know which one you should use if you want to do something in particular so if you're working with tabular data which you usually are just a fancy term for saying i have a table i have rows and columns uh, if you want to work with that then go ahead and uh, use pandas because it's really good at doing that type of task and numpy is also can be used for tabular data but it's more so used for if you're uh, changing different values and arranging it in a particular shape uh, so that you can change an array and feed it into a machine learning algorithm and TensorFlow Kira is a particular definitely if I was to talk about this point uh, focus your efforts on tensorflow.kiras and not on tensorflow a lot of people say I got to learn tensorflow sure but 99% of what you want to do especially as a beginner intermediate up until even advanced stuff unless you're going really advanced you are fine with using the high level abstraction of Kira's uh it says no data I'm confused oh did I drop I think I might have dropped for a moment I don't know guys can you answer that question did I drop
here. Okay, it said it said my my stream said that I had uh, no connection at all, so I think it might have died for a brief moment. I don't know. Um, okay, thanks, thanks everybody, I appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, make sure that you know if you're doing machine learning type work, you're doing the TensorFlow specialization, which is great uh, if you want to, but it's mostly about Kira's because you don't need to go into all of that heavy duty stuff. And for the base data science stuff, that's not all about the machine learning and deep learning stuff. Definitely get really good at pandas. NumPy probably won't be quite as useful if you're just doing like data analytics. Uh, and PySpark, I, I said, I would say a million times on this channel that people think that PySpark is for big data people and you are a big data person. Stop thinking that you are not a big data engineer, you're a data scientist. No. Data scientists use big data. We need big data to make machine learning algorithms. So you should use PySpark because that's what everybody else is going to be using at the company. Okay, so uh, PySpark might not be that useful if you're just kind of doing your own thing. It could still be useful if you're just working with your own data. You might want to use it if you get comfortable with it, uh, but it's definitely very useful if you want to work in a company. Okay. <laughs> Me too, Arshia. Uh, Okay, I will stay again for another minute or two. If there's no more questions, um, then I'll drop off. Why is the con why are the amount of viewers going up? <laughs> okay, uh, yes, yes. Uh, go ahead. You don't have to stay for the whole thing. It's totally okay. <laughs> I'm not going to be insulted. Please make a video on different ML model parameters and hyperparameter tuning. I mean, yeah, yeah, I could do that for sure. Uh, hyperparameter tuning is, it, it's not like I could make a single video and be like, this is how to tune hyperparameters. Uh, it's very specific to each algorithm, every single different thing you're doing, different clustering algorithm, different uh, regression or uh, you know neural network problem. It's, it's very specific to the problem and hyperparameters just means it doesn't necessarily mean just like setting an alpha equal to 0 0.2. It could mean um, like setting the architecture of your model. Still, I would count as, as a hyperparameter. And so it's a difficult question. And it, it's really something you just get in practice. I should make a video on it or, or maybe at least make sure to talk about that point in the, the, the bigger tutorials. Uh, but it's not really something you can just talk about in 15 minutes and then you say oh okay i think i understand how to tune hyperparameters like it's it's a very complex topic in particular to each problem Okay, again, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it. Uh, one more minute, and if there's no questions, I'm going to drop it. Yeah, okay, errors and optimization techniques. I could do an overview of uh, various optimizations for, for all the different models, uh, for sure. Yeah. On a confusion matrix. Okay, yeah, sure, I can do a, I can do a confusion matrix video. Um, that's, yeah, that's no problem. That's a good idea. Thank you for the feedback. Yeah, actually, before I go, so now flood me, you're you're all kind of, some of you are getting the right idea. Uh, I do am absolutely looking for constructive feedback. Uh, so whatever, and, and I can't promise that like, since you suggest a video, like I'm going to make it tomorrow, because like, I just, I can't work that way. Uh, I can answer questions a little bit in the meantime. Um, but the, just flood me with feedback, like, honestly, just to say, and I, I like, I'm not going to get insulted. You don't have to be super nice about it necessarily. Just, you know, say what you're thinking about, you know, what you like, what you don't like uh, about any of my videos, like how I'm talking, the intro of videos. Uh, I'd like to pretend that I have, like, everything figured out and I know exactly what everybody wants, but obviously I don't. I Just let me know. Um, you know, give me all sorts of feedback, whether it's in this chat uh, or in, you know, if you don't want to make it public, this is a little bit public, so uh, you could message me or whatever. That's totally okay. Also, apparently I can submit to the chat, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to send you guys a heart. There you go. <laughs> mm. 
very happy. I'm very happy to hear it. It's it's cool. Uh, cool is my my middle name. Or she, if you're still listening, you're gonna. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Chris is mad you didn't mention University of Ottawa. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, it is it, sure. I I I said McGill, which is uh, pretty close to there, I believe. But um, absolutely, University of Ottawa is, is is a good choice. It's just I I was asked the question. I was trying to think of anything that came to my mind. Really, I'm sure I missed like twenty other ones. I'm sorry, Rizvi. I liked your cheat. I liked your teaching methods more. I had gone through all of your Python modules. Now I want to take down your machine winning. Okay, so just positive feedback. I I really appreciate that. Um, good. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. Do the machine learning stuff. Uh, it's gonna take. If you're starting from the beginning, you it'll probably take a while to catch up with me. Uh, you probably can though at some point, uh, and that's totally okay. So yeah, again, if everyone's not aware. Well. Uh, I, I I post one video at noon my time every single day, so that's what he's talking about. Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna drop off. So guys, thank you so much. Like I, I'm so happy that on my first random live stream, I'm gonna do this more. So if you're if you're not subscribed, make sure that you are. And I'm gonna pop up, and I'll also schedule some stuff so that I can get even more. Uh, more people. I really, really, really appreciate the support. Like, I, it's it means so much to me. And yeah, stay tuned. I will see you next time. Sorry for people that are dropping in. I'm just dropping off. Uh, <laughs> I apologize for that. And <laughs> cool is cool is my middle name. Okay, I'm gonna end it. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate. It. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.